What's going on guys? We're at HQ this week. We have some athletes in town leading into the games and this is the first training session. So we got Cole, got in a couple days ago. Chris, first time games qualifier. And then uh, one of our friends, Kale. We met him when he was at West Point. His home is uh, here. So when he's, uh, when he's home on break or summer vacation or anything, he trains out here. So hitting an EMOM right now, one power snatch, one full snatch, and one overhead squat every minute on the minute. So you notice how when you're catching it on the full snatches and it's hitting here and then rocking back a little bit, that's just coming out around the chest. So through the middle, just focus on getting those elbows high instead of swinging out like that. I mean, just watching them do their powers with 225, they look effortless, catching them so high. On that second pull off your hip, just take the extra like quarter second. You're kind of doing like a pump and a bit of a dive right now. Okay. Take that extra quarter second. It feels like you're there in eternity where you stay long and extended. But right now it looks like just a bump and a dive so you're just squeaking under it. Get everything out of that pull before you turn over. Got it. All right. There, nice. You met, met the bar up a little bit higher and then controlled it down on that one. Instead of just diving under, boom, crashing on you. Yes. Like you can get away with it, with with your size, with like having that, with that weight and meeting it that low. But it's like as soon as you start adding on 10 more pounds, 15 more pounds, that's when it's gonna really show. So even even when you're doing a full, try to power it. Yeah. So we're in our games prep camp, which means that people are getting together to train, but what it specifically means training-wise is that they're doing things that they're gonna see at the games. We don't know exactly what the games entails, but we've got enough data that we can guess kind of in the right direction of the types of things we'll see. And so some of that just means that maybe they were doing intervals on some Metcons before, and now they're doing straight up for time Metcons, because that's what we see at the games. They transition a lot at the games, right? So a workout might not have any running in it, but you might have 200 meters of running just in your transitions. So we try to recreate that as we get closer to the games. Whereas far away, you're training on your weaknesses, you're specifically doing as much volume as you can without beating up the body as much as you can. And now we're in a phase where we're doing what we're gonna see at the games, what they're gonna be tested on. An example of this is their weightlifting where it might be like 10 triples in the snatch with a bunch of rest in between, pretty far out from the games. Now we're doing an EMOM because we're gonna see a format that is more similar to that, likely at the games. So two questions there is one, how do you peak your training or how important is it to tailor your training to the games? A lot of folks, just because of media like this, it seems like game training is this big thing. There's a lot of lore around it, right? They're doing as much as possible all the time. They're smashing their body. Their volume goes from two sessions a day to three sessions a day to as much as possible. And I've found that that's just not how it works, right? Their training doesn't move that far away from what they were doing before semis we start to introduce things that we're more likely to see. An example might be the pig, right? Or a lot of outdoor running, things like that. And then we get more specific on the formats. And so there's just historically things that we've seen at the games that you don't get to see at other stages of competition. So it becomes more specific, but it's not necessarily this huge increase in volume of training. And even that, like we haven't increased volume much for these guys in true Metcons until this week where they're doing a little bit more than they were in the past. We've tried to increase that volume on straight running intervals, accessory work to prepare them for what they'll see at the games, but it's not this exponential increase in volume. And then your second question is, can you mess up your training so much that it really hurts your performance at the games? You can do that at any stage of competition. The margin is smaller at semifinals, right? Because there's only a few spots, so you've got to be pretty dialed. And then at the games, you've got to come in with enough energy in the tank to make it through that long haul of an event with all sorts of different events and a lot of volume on those events. So you can certainly do way too much training going into the games and come in flat. 
And that's what you want to avoid. You don't want to come in flat. Pushing through and knowing that like five minutes after it's all done, you're going to feel like normal again. Uh, so what I was telling Cole too is really important. Find, find your breathing cadence. It's just like running, just like swimming. If you're breathing sporadically, your body's going to panic and tell you to slow down. You get into that nice rhythm, you almost hypnotize yourself, and the time just clicks by. And then it's easier to ride that line as well. I'm Chris Hybara. Uh, I am currently living in Kansas City. Your first time here riding? Yeah, first time here. I followed pro for two years. I missed the first because you're supposed to register for it and I missed the first registration, so the second time I ever got released for the pro is whenever I signed up for it. But I've been with them for two years, but I did qualify for the CrossFit Games this year on the pro track. So I've only been the semifinals once, one other time was last year. Uh, I just knew I had the endurance the year prior, I just didn't have the strength uh, to keep up with the people, the elite people. But I knew if I could get stronger from last year, I could pretty much average everything pretty well. And that was my biggest thing this off season, the year prior was getting stronger. And I knew I could average everything pretty well. And obviously the goal this year was to get top 10 finishes all my workouts this year. Itches. Yeah, I think like the goal right now has been to like try to shore up the weakness of running and just like continuously hitting skills that have given me trouble in the past. An example of that would be like upper body pulling capacity has been a big issue for me. So we've just been drilling it two, three times a week and it's been cool to see the benefits and how far I've come. And you know, I look forward to seeing how much more progress we can make across the board. Yeah, this is your third time that you're gonna go to the games? Yeah, so this will be my third year individually, and um, it's really flown by, but I'm excited to go to Texas and uh, get a new venue. You so. went to Madison once, uh, wow. teens, right? I did, yeah, when I was 17, so that How was- How did that go? I got third that year. Oh, uh, okay. And it's funny, yeah, because like James and Dolan were in the age group that's younger than me, and then Guy Mayeros, he got second that year, Angelo got first. So like we're all still in the sport and competing, which is really cool. So I know where I stack up on a lot of my big strengths and I just like know what my benchmarks are and like continuously know how to get better at those. But the things that I'm not good at, it's really good to see other people kick my butt and just getting the chance to, you know, lose by 10 seconds instead of 30 and, you know, just continuously build ground there. Um, I feel like I learn a lot more from losing than I do winning, so. That's what I take from it. for a little better on the thrusters, but I was happy with the little kick I had on the run. Um, yeah, the pull-ups felt pretty good on the first 50, but those fell apart too. But yeah, it was fun. I mean, we're doing game. things that we need to work on, yeah, so it's good. Good job, Thank you, dude. Once you kind of sitting here like this, 
pull it, pulling it into your chest, and then as you come up, pulling it up and getting your elbow tight. When you first came up, like as as you came here, it slipped down a little bit. You want to try to keep it pulled in as much as you can. How you can do it with an atlas stone, where you're just like sitting in the bottom. So just, you can just bend your knees, put it in the pocket of your hip. There you go. Yeah, just like that. There. Clean should not be one movement like they are with the barbell. Where it's like smooth through the middle. It's like no, you pick it, sit here, readjust, get it pulled into your chest, and then roll it up. Who taught you all this stuff whenever you were training for the game? Rob. Rob? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, even before we worked with him, I would call him. Be like, hey, I need help. <laughs> heavy. Very awkward. I've done like heavy axle bar. Like a thick bar that weighs like 80 pounds. But I've never done this. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. But yeah. that's why we're doing it, right? Third CrossFit, I would get so annoyed when people would say power jerk and push jerk. There it is. And it was like push jerks. And so I was doing push jerks. Push jerks. Yeah. And they're just a little bit slower. And uh, I remember somebody beating me in a workout. I was like, you were just doing power jerks, dude. And he was like, yeah, that's what a workout was. I was like, no, no, no. They're two <laughs> different things. And they had push no jerks, idea. you don't move your feet. It's a power jerk, but you don't move your feet. And then it's just all upper body. Yeah. Would your training be similar to what they're doing right now? A few weeks yeah. before the games? Yeah, very similar. So I'd say like for me leading up, like probably the month going into and the month after semifinals was like probably the heaviest, the highest volume of stuff. Cause I would train, I would try to train through semifinals or regionals, whatever it's called at that point, because I did feel confident enough that I'm like, okay, I don't need to be peaked to qualify. I think it put winning it put like the first place at semifinals or regionals, it put that in jeopardy, but I didn't, I wasn't as concerned about that. I would rather have a good base going into the games than have like a good performance at semifinals. Yeah, I remember it was always for me, it was like the week and a half, two weeks before the games were probably some of the mentally toughest because you're doing, it's right before the biggest competition of the year, so your nerves are up. But then that's when I was doing like the least in the gym. So you don't even you don't even have your daily mech on your daily workout to like boost that boost your confidence back up of like, okay, no, I'm I'm fit, I'm fit. You know, you're going that like two weeks without ever really testing it too much. So not only are you sitting, but it's when you have the most energy. So you're just kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs like, is it, is it go time? Is it go time? The nerves were there all year round like that's just, I trained scared that's how I that's how I trained um, I wouldn't recommend like it served its purpose and I I think I found the silver lining of it pretty quickly but I wouldn't recommend it it's not enjoyable <laughs> <laughs> but for me it was like the nerves were getting real probably right as the deload started because then you just have so much time on your hands you have so much time you're not really testing anything it's kind of like at that point that's when you're really going like all right I've got what I got you know, it's too late to try to find a new skill or start working on something. And that's when O'Keefe and Sammy would really step in and shine. They'd be like, hey, we love you no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've mentioned this a few times, but I think there was one workout that you would test before competitions and that would be like the one that, yeah, if you can like do it. Yeah, for me, it was the rowing workout um, on the C2 rower. So pre-programmed nine rounds, minute 40 on 20 seconds rest uh and i had a two minute two minute break after the five, fifth round i would do that almost probably before almost every every competition and then i always used uh, back squatting like a back squatting imam to kind of gauge where i was at with strength so the workout started as six minute imam six back squats every minute 
but like speed squat. So I wasn't it, like if, if I were squatting in a competition, they would have been no reps because I would never lock them out. But it was literally just, you're just trying to get past that breaking point. So like once you're here, it's like, that's effortless, you know? And like that part is effortless. It's a standard. So in competition, they need to be done. But I was just looking for that quickest cycle rate. So it'd be a six, six by six on the minute and just like hit here, boom, boom just to get as much time under tension as possible. And then that would progress, you know, that six minutes would stretch out to eight minutes or 10 minutes. And then once I got there, I'd pull the minutes back and add an extra rep. And then, you know, once you're doing like an eight by eight at a certain weight, then it's like, all right, now let's throw on more weight. So always playing with the, the time, the reps, the weight. But yeah, it was typically between six and eight minutes, between six and eight reps. But yeah, I always like doing that too. Like if I could get through that, all speed reps, then I knew I was in a good good spot. Yeah, what was the pace in the rower? The rower, uh, sub 140s. The way I trained, it was, that was all I knew. The, the way I thought, that was all I knew. So like, through my whole career, I thought, I'm not special, I'm no different than anyone else. I just, I have to do these other things. And I was like, everyone trains the same, everyone eats the same, everyone sleeps, and it's, no. It was around the clock. I didn't realize how tunnel visioned I was on that goal all day every day I was just obsessed with it and so it's like every aspect every step I took I was thinking about that and so then it, you know you better not swell over <laughs> it wasn't just while I was in the gym I was dedicated to it it was when I got home like how I rest how I recover how I sleep how I eat it was every single thought was how is this going to affect and I would tailor every aspect to it. But now that I'm out of it and it's like, oh my God, there's so much more to life. You know, there's so much more going on in the day and being involved in loved ones' lives and shit like that. But I had a very good perspective because my CrossFit career was my second sports career. I thought I was, I thought my sports days were done with weightlifting. And so when I came into it, it was like, I knew like this will end someday. And so it's like, let's just get everything I can out of it. It's been, been some, some adjustments after retirement of like, oh, I can take a day off or, you know, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> what are they doing, Jake? They're going back to back workout, reverse order. So they did a Metcon yesterday and whoever finished last is going first today. And whoever finished first is going last. They're going 12, nine, six ring muscle up, seven, five, three P bar traverse. So on these parallel bars here, then they're going to rest twice as long as it took them to work and go into 12, nine, six bar muscle up, seven, five, three P bar traverse. So it's just going to be an absolute blast on their upper body. In three, two, I am so Probably excited. Did, uh, it, I can't RDLs. believe, I mean, so grateful that I missed it last year. This little one came in, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm yesterday. so, so uh, stoked. She's about to turn one. She's about to turn one, I know. Yeah, that's it's wild. Know. She's going to be at the games. So I worked at Reebok and I helped manage the CrossFit partnership for Reebok. So I am um, everything from athletes to like our retail store at the CrossFit Games to apparel. One of the most vivid memories was the run event in the soccer stadium in 2016, I think it was. I could probably, if I were in the stadium, I could be like, that was my seat. I could walk to it from my memory because if anybody doesn't know the story, like he was a terrible runner and then, you know, he trained with middle schoolers for an entire year and with a track coach and um, 
smashed that event and nobody was expecting it so it was super cool i am so excited about texas we're just like taking over the town and that's just going to be so cool i mean my participation in the games now is everything everything but this you know i do um, all of our marketing media, bringing to life different activations. So it's just super cool. Our team has hustled to bring some really fun things to life. So excited to see you all there. So this is gonna be your tenth. Tenth year, yeah. Took a little, took a little hiatus last year, but we're at number ten. Look at you! Look at you! I see you, little girl. <laughs> Dance. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Good job. Oh. That's sweaty. <laughs> what are they doing right now, Jay? They're doing a strongman workout, and we uh, didn't tell them before that we were going to add a plate every time they pushed or dragged. And so they went into it thinking they would just have a little extra and we told them that these extra plates like we thought it was going to be too heavy and so we actually made a mistake and we took some off which is true but then we decided that each round we would add a plate and so they end on a drag which is going to be a little bit easier just given our terrain here and so their last one's going to be their heaviest drag and it adds a little bit of like games-esque interference where sometimes they start a workout and we've seen them pull something in the past where they add something halfway through that you didn't know, like the ranch run where they told them, hey, you're going to double back and do it. You know what it's headed, levels, yeah, we set it, go on, go on, yeah, get ready, huh, you see the team in confetti, huh, oh, 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 build for it, overcome, thrill for it, out in the field for it, this ain't a challenge, just billboards, huh, we ready, huh, they can't stop with this head, can't stop, huh, we ready, huh, they can't stop with this head, go, 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 we ready, yes, they can't stop with this head, Tearing it up, so it makes sense. Let me see it. Tearing it up. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see it. This handstand walk so fast, I ripped. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's never yeah. Me neither. Did that happen yesterday? No, it happened on those parallel bars. Really? Yeah. Like I was moving awesome fast. I mean, so we fast. did a lot of volume on it, but they don't have cuts, so I don't know. Um, it is what it is. What's your background in sports? Uh, I ran track, played football and I played a little bit of soccer. I went to a small school, so, I mean, we all played every sport. Uh, I played basketball a little bit too, but everybody started growing and I stopped growing. <laughs> yeah. 2018, I started a little bit of CrossFit, but I was still in high school, so I wasn't like going every day. I was just going here and there. But yeah, I would say 2020 is whenever I started taking it serious. That's whenever I started doing it every day, Monday through Saturday or whatever. The, regular schedule is. Whenever I was playing college football, I was so focused on football at the time, but I was I decided that I ended, I ended up liking working out more than I did playing football and being on the field. And I enjoyed the hard stuff whenever I was training for football. And the summer, the two sessions a day, I enjoyed that stuff. So I was like, I'm in the wrong sport. Were you pretty good at it since, the, since you started? I would say I was average. I wouldn't say I was like, oh, I'm good. No, I had to work a lot. I wasn't gifted. <laughs> 2020, I definitely told myself I wanted to go to the CrossFit Games. And I got a hold of coaches, and def that was definitely the goal going in. I talked to, that was the first thing I told my coach. I said, I want to go to the CrossFit Games. So, yeah, that was definitely on my mind. We're going to do a little run swim action, event one of the CrossFit Games 2024. What's up? I heard you're a good swimmer. Uh, I, I would say so. Um, I'm going to try to get ahead of Cole on the run because I guess he's a really good swimmer. <laughs> All right, so there and back would be a 300. The rock is 300? No, what? There and back would be a 500. I might be the best swimmer here, who knows? He's gotta push Maybe he's gonna jump in the water and just cook me. Yeah, you never know. What are you talking about, best swimmer here? I, I got a hunch. Are you better than him? 
Hey, she's joining us. You're just jumping in for the swim. I'm though. just going for the swim. I you can ready. dive in at the same time ready. as me. I have full confidence I'll win. I would love Even to, after the run. I would love to beat yo booty in this. I said we put some money I said it. I don't care. Just putting around. <laughs> To there, back, there, and back. So we need to stage Simon over there. I'll and go do that. When right you now. drive, just make sure it's not confusing. We're here. We're right here. You're gonna run out all the way. This is where kind of the entrance to where we're at right now is. Do you see Josh? Do I see him? Is that Josh? Yeah. No Josh. Breathing felt great, it was just, my hamstring was getting tighter and tighter and I was not gonna get stranded out there. So I just came back, got some water and just jumped back in. That was me, I was like within five feet of you. Oh, were you? Yeah. I was like, I sighted and I saw you and I just shifted, I was like, I don't wanna hit him. It felt good, man. I mean, getting in the water, uh, my heart rate was below 180, so that was not expected. And then the swim went worse than I thought. So it's kinda like a trade. Yeah. So yeah, I'll take it. That run though, for me, was really good. And yeah. we've been working on it a lot, so I'm proud of that. Yeah, you, you stay in pace with Chris, and he's a good runner. Yeah, no, I mean, I, if I think if I kicked any harder on the run, then maybe it would have been rough, even rougher on the yeah. swim. So yeah. nothing to be upset about, and on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> 